gonna turn us afresh with fresh fire tonight. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to worship. We don't take it for granted. God, somebody is not able to do what we're doing. And I thank you that you've given us one more chance. You've given us one more opportunity to be able to praise and to worship and to give your name the glory. I thank you that you decided to wake us up early this morning and give us a brand new day and you protected us all day long and allowed us to come into your house. And as David said, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I will come into his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. We're grateful tonight and we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for that you're going to speak to us tonight. We thank you for ordaining this night for somebody to be healed, for somebody to be delivered, for somebody to be set free, for somebody to go back home better. God, somebody's going to have a miracle on a Monday night. We believe it and we receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Psalms 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise. Oh, I feel revival already. Shall continually be in my mouth. Thy soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, taste that sin that the Lord.
faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that the God who allowed COVID to come will take care of us who are in the midst of COVID. Amen. How many know you can come? Amen. And I want to thank you for the last minute's notice of 24 hours. I think you've done right nicely to come out tonight as many of you who are here. Amen. We were so tremendously blessed yeah. by this man of God, this anointed preaching machine. Yeah. I'm telling you, those of you who are watching virtually, we welcome you as well. And we greet you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask that you would share this tonight as you are watching and worshiping with us. Because as Pastor said last night, you're not just watching, but you're worshiping with us. And we welcome you. Let's in person welcome our virtual worshipers. Amen. We welcome you. We hope that you will stay in tune and share the word, text message, somebody tell them they need to get on. They don't need to uh, not miss this tonight. I just believe God's going to do something miraculous in this place. How many of you came tonight with great expectation? Amen. I came with great expectation, and I thank the Lord, and I just believe he's going to move. Thank, let me thank those persons, the intake persons, security, the driver, transportation, musicians, praise team, sound persons. Come on, let's give all of them a hand. Let me give all of them officers, because when you're in COVID, it's not like it used to be. Uh, you got to go through so many processes and changes and steps just to take precautionary measures for your own safety. And so I know for them it was a sacrifice asking them to come at the last minute and having you to come. So I just want Paul to say thank you because you didn't have to do it. And I praise the Lord for you. So glad to have my brother here, my brother beloved, uh, and the person of Reverend Wayne Ayer. Stand up, Reverend Ayer. He's my brother in love. Amen. Pastor's first Baptist. He preaches, he dresses like a black man. Amen. Amen. I told him I want that tie. I want that big tie. Amen. Amen. I tell you, it's so good to have you here joining us, uh, with us. He preached here for us uh, last year for our men's day, and he did a great job. Amen. Great to have you here on tonight. All right. Thank you, Reverend Watson, for orchestrating everything. We're going to move along. We're going to hear this preacher, this giant of preacher, this preacher machine, this all the fire. Amen. All the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. He's my little brother. Amen. And he's accompanied by his mother, his brother, and his armor bearers. Amen. Give them a hand as well. Amen. He's coming in his own right. Uh, our little brother, his family here at First Baptist. And uh, we're going to hear from two of our members who are anointed singers. Amen. My brother and Mrs. Jenkins. Amen. Give them a hand as they come. They're going to set us up tonight. They're going to prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. Now listen, when the preacher finishes preaching, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to take place. Uh, listen, let me, I don't, let me give the house rules now. I don't know what's going to happen. Amen. But this is what we do. So we're going to have a basket over to my right. And those persons to my right, your left, will exit out this door. If you're able to walk, amen, after the preacher preaches, finish preaches, if you're able to move, I don't know what might happen, but if you're able to move on your own, amen, exit out this door, and those who are on my left, you will exit out this door, and you leave your offering as you exit the door. I'm asking if you can give at least $10 tonight in this offering as we have added on this this extra night that we didn't even plan for. I, listen, I just believe we're living in a time we got to move when God says move. Amen. You got to do it when God says do it. Amen. And so, uh, that's those are the house rules. So, those on the side, go out here, leave your offering. 
over on this side, go out this door and leave your offering. And make sure that you are excused by the ushers row by row. Amen. If somebody is on the floor, amen. Don't bother them. Just leave them there. Let the Lord work on them. Amen. And listen, I tell you, when the Lord gets a hold of you, you don't need people fanning you, trying to hold you down. You don't need people taking off your leg. Listen, when the Lord gets a hold of me, don't bother me. Just let him bless me. If anybody like me tonight just want the Lord to bless me, I want God to do whatever he wants to do. I don't need you trying to interfere because see that tells me you really ain't out here for anything anyway you just here to be seen and to be suspect but I I came with great expectation and I, I'm looking for the Lord to do something different in my life do I have any different lookers in here come on come on who's in here like me came looking for something different to
because of recharge and what I believe God is going to do for the people of faith before this year is out. I said before this year is out. There are some great and mighty things that God is going to do. Not just because he's faithful, but because we have been faithful to him. And whenever you are faithful, you will see fruit. Come on, somebody. You will be the recipient of harvest. And I am so excited for what God is getting ready to do. Would you just, in affirmation, say out in the atmosphere, and it is so. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to the word of God tonight. We are so grateful for our virtual worshipers and virtual congregation. And uh, we are certainly praying for you wherever you are in the world tonight. The Old Testament book of 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23. I always have to make mention uh, and show love to my former minister of music, Brother Stephen Pender. So glad to be in his presence and to be able to minister together here in Salisbury. Lord, prepare me to be a saint, thinking that what they have was owed to them. 
But there are so many that have ascribed to this spirit of entitlement. Uh, and they feel that, that they have actually earned their keep. Help me preach it here tonight. Many of us have taken for granted the blessings of God. And some of us treat it any kind of way. Oh, oh, we fail to acknowledge, brothers and sisters, that every good and perfect gift, do I have any Bible believers in the room, comes from God. Some of us have learned during this pandemic, Pastor Watson, we have learned just how valuable certain things are. We've learned in this pandemic that not everything attached to us was essential. And we learned how to shed the non-essential things and hold on to the things that had purpose and priority. Not only was that pertaining to things, but that was also pertaining to people. For many of us have been tagging along dead weight far too long. And it took a pandemic for us to shed the pounds of excess dead weight that were never pouring into us but actually taking from us. Oh my God, this pandemic taught us how to find the things that were essential. We learned that sometimes excess leads to ungratefulness. And ungratefulness often births a spirit of entitlement. I don't know if I've ever seen Bishop Copeland such an ungrateful society. I don't know if I've ever seen in all my short years of such an ungrateful people. And we are teaching our children, Reverend Gale, to be the same way. I want it without working for it. I want it without sacrificing. I want it because the color of my skin says I can have it. I want it because of my political time. So I can have it. I want it because I live in the right neighborhood. I want it because I make enough money to get it. And when we get it, we often abuse it and misuse it. One thing that the pandemic has taught me is that God is my provider. Do I have a half a witness in the room who knows stimulus checks didn't help you get where you are? The government and their issuing and their distribution of emergency funds did not get you where you were. It was the Lord who made a way out of no way. It was the Lord who put food on my table. It was the Lord who kept a roof over my head. It was the Lord that gave me a reasonable portion of health and strength. It was the Lord that opened up windows of heaven and poured me out blessings. I don't have room enough to receive. Is there anybody here who knows it was the Lord? Will you do me a favor and just point to somebody and tell them it was the Lord. It was, it, it, it was the Lord. He is the source of my strength. He, he is the strength of my life. You wondering how I made it? It's an easy answer. It was the Lord. It, it, it was nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. And while there are many on a quest to acquire more things, we have to confess that everything we have, God gave it to us. And because he gave it to me, I value it. Because he gave it to me, I'm willing to guard it. Because he gave it to me, I'm willing to protect it. Because he gave it to me, I'll stand up for it. Shama in the text gives us the right attitude about guarding the gifts of God. For God has already shown us his heart by what he's given us with his hand. Let me say it again. God has already shown us his heart by what he's given us with his hand. But sometimes we fail 
to seek his face because we are so accustomed to what we receive with his hand. So sometimes he will shut his hand so that you will seek his face because the Bible says seek ye first. I wish I had preachers who would pray with me and members tonight that would pray. I said seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then everything else all oh, somebody knows it tonight will be added unto you so there are times when we've got to go through seasons of a shut hand so we can open our ears and we can open our eyes so that we can hear him and so that we can seek him and when you have diligently sought him and when you've been willing to serve him he will in turn bless you accordingly and when he blesses you you have the responsibility to guard the goods that you have received I know the worth I know the value of what I have that's why I defend it and as I mature in Christ I recognize what true value really is as you mature in the spirit your fight changes as you mature, I said, as you mature in the spirit, your fight changes. As you mature in the spirit, your discussions change. You do not allow people to engage you into worthless discussions that will not bring about a betterment or change in the situation. As I mature, my discussion changes and my debates change and my perspective changes. It, it's not about how much I'm able to do. It's about the quality in which I do it. As I age and as I mature in faith, I come to a different level of wisdom and a different level of knowledge. And I understand that I have to choose my battles wisely. There are many of us and many of those that lose fights and lose energy over things that don't even matter. So many of us get all bent out of shape and all attitudinal and all disgruntled and all aggravated. Your pressure done gone up, your eyes done turned bloodshot. And you're looking older than you ought to be looking because you have allowed yourself to put energy and to put thought and time in stuff that is not even important. Yeah, you preach, I know that's right. Napoleon Bonaparte says, you must not fight too often with one enemy or you will teach him all your art of war. And some of us have not been successful because we spent too much time fighting the same enemies. I'm almost finished, y'all, but we, 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 we spent too much time and as a result of that, the enemies that we are always fighting have learned our tactics, they've learned our strategies, and they now know what we're going to do before we do it. That's why Jesus always approached every situation differently. He never approached it the same way. It was contingent on what group of people he was talking to. It was contingent upon what region he found himself in. He never approached the, the battles the same way anytime. You've always got to have something else in your sack. Never let the enemy know everything you're packing. It's enough for him to just know I'm packing. I wish I had some real people in here. Just to just know that I didn't show up at this fight unarmed. I, I, I got something with me, but 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 I'm not gonna let you know everything that I got in my bag. But but let me tell you something. I got something that can do some damage. Greater is he. I need some church folk tonight that is in me than he that is in the world. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I need 
need some sanctified folk, but a mighty fruit God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself above the knowledge of God, I can bring it down. You cannot fight the same way. Maybe you getting your butt kicked. Because the devil is familiar with you and your stuff. You got to be selective in not just who and what you fight, but also how you fight. Who better for us to learn from than David? Who better to learn from than the one who as a child took a slingshot and five smooth stones and took down the giant Goliath? Who better to, to learn than David, this warrior, this one who defended Israel? against the Philistines and other enemies. This warrior who would not allow himself to be tricked into fighting against his own people. The text picks up tonight with David at the close of his life. This one who was a warrior and a womanizer. This one who had strength and had sin. This one who had problems, but was also purpose. Are y'all talking to me? Let me tell you something. Some of the best lessons I learned, Vince, were from imperfect people. I don't try to learn too much from perfect church folks. Because most of the time, the only thing I learned from them is how to lie.
Let me say that again. It may not mean much to you, but God gave it to me. And I'm not going to allow you to come in and claim what God gave to me. I need you to point to somebody and just shake your head like you know you got an attitude that comes along with our African Americanism. Pastor Ayers, you got it too. I want you to just shake your head and tell them not on my watch. No, the devil is a liar. I ain't going to let you just come up in here and take what I work for. I, I ain't going to let you just come up in here. I've been praying over this stuff. I, I've been fasting over this stuff. I've been turning my plate down. I've been meditating on the word both day and night so that I could be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that would bring forth fruit in due season. And you think, Pastor Charles, that I'm going to let you come in here and take what God gave me? No, no. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Shema, Shema stands up and defends what God has given him. He says, I've got a guard this land and I don't know what your plot is tonight I don't know what your pea patch is tonight but whatever it is I charge you to stand in the spirit of faith and declare for God I'll live and for God I'll die I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus whatever your plot is whether it's your family whether it's your children I took too much time in prayer I anointed them every day before they left this house. I went down on my knees and asked God to cover them. And I'm not going to let the vices of this world, I'm not letting any bullies, I'm not letting any enemies take charge of my children. I'm not letting any demonic presence, any satanic force snatch from me what God has put in the body. Let me hurry and close. It may not mean much to you, Cause you ain't went through what I went through to get it. I'm sorry, I know that doesn't sound theologically astute. But the fact of the matter is, somebody else will not value what you have. Cause they didn't cry tears like you did. They didn't stay up waiting and asking God to work miracles in their life like you did. It may not mean much to you, but it means something to me. Where's your elbow? Nut somebody with your elbow. Tell them it means something to me. You were not there in my season of sowing. You were not there through the sweat and the tears. And now you want to come and snatch it. When I'm the one that worked for it. See, let me help you understand. God saw my good intentions. And because he saw my good intentions, he blessed me with good increase. And you want to invade my space. Let me give you these three things and I'm done. If you have a fighting spirit and you believe that it's worth it. First thing you need to know. Is that the enemy always shows up. During harvest time. Are y'all in the house? I'm in the text. Let me tell you why. Go to the text. Go to verse 11. It says that there was a plot of land full. Is that, is that what's in the word? Y'all see that? It says it was full of lentils. Full of peas. Full of beans. Full of whatever. And the enemy did not show up while they were tilling the soil. The enemy didn't show up while they were planting the seed. Enemy showed up when the plot was full. The enemy will always show up when it's harvest time. Because you've been holding on by faith. You've been waiting by faith. I believe somebody in here knows the word of God. I need somebody. I love my young people. And I try to be as young as I possibly can be. But I need somebody who's earned their AARP card tonight. To lift up one hand. If you know the word is true. When it says, but they that wait. See, we've raised a very impatient generation, and we've raised a generation who want it now, who want to see it done, who want to make sure it's already happening. But I need somebody who's lived a little bit to know what they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not be. I need some seniors who can just wave at me and declare, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen.
strength of your heart. The reason it's worth fighting for is because I had to wait on it. This didn't come easy for me. This didn't come instantaneous for me. This wasn't no microwave miracle. I had to wait. I had to pray. I had to believe that in due season, I would reap if I faded not. Yeah. The enemy will always come after you've waited. After you've waited, he's ready to wage war. It says that the wheel was full of lentils. You done sweat it. They don't come when you working. They come when you reaping. He wants to creep up on you in your best season. He wants to come and disrupt your life after you give it to the Lord. He wants to raise hell once you start raising praise. <laughs> That's when he wants to start messing with your family. Once you have committed everybody to the Lord. That's when the enemy comes. That's when he shows up. After you pay your tithes and your offerings. And you start seeing blessings and favor. And increase in your life. Then he shows up reminds me of when the children of Israel had come out of Egypt and they ended up in Rephidim. Y'all remember that? And they, they, they needed some water. They didn't know what they were going to do. And Moses said, we need some water. What you going to do? Water comes. They get water. Moses does what he has to do. And then all of a sudden, the adversaries show up. They did not know how to fight. They were not prepared for war. But the Bible says that the Lord showed up and worked on their behalf. That's what the enemy does. That's what the enemy does. He waits. He waits until you say, I'm going to have church. Uh, I know that's right. For stuff past Watson to start breaking down. Uh, he waits until you say, we're going to have it anyway. Right. To start stirring up mess and confusion. He doesn't mind your expression as long as you don't have an experience. I know that's he doesn't mind you having church as long as there is no change. He doesn't mind us coming to holler as long as we don't end up holy. What I have is worth fighting for. My praise, brothers and sisters, is not a performance. It's a passion. I have a passion to praise him. And there's a purpose behind my praise. And every time I praise him, he releases power. Uh, power for me to stand. Power for me to make it. What did I say? One, one, is that the enemy always shows up during harvest time. But the next thing you need to know is that everybody won't stand with you. It's in the text. I want y'all to look at it. It's in the text. It, it, it says that the Philistines showed up and everybody fled. Yeah, I hear you. But wait, I thought you were so sanctified. I hear you. Oh, you're wait, 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 wait. Not, not you. I know you ain't running. You who can't speak English because you're so busy speaking in tongues. Wait, no, uh, I know you didn't run. Not, not you. Not you who always got a word for somebody. I, I know you ain't running from the Philistines when, 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 when you stand up and, and shout louder than everybody else in there. I know. I know you ain't running. The Bible says that everybody fled except Shama. That's a, that's a lesson to us that everybody will not stand with you. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, you got to be willing to go alone. There's a song that when you sing says, I'll go. If I have to go by myself. And brothers and sisters, you will never find out how much strength and accompaniment you have until you're willing to go by yourself. It is then that you realize somebody said that I'll never leave you. Nor will I forsake you, but I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. But people will show you their.
their strength better than they can tell you. Because some will tell you, oh, I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to be with you. I ain't going to let you go down by yourself. If they mess with you, they got to mess with me. We come together. One of us can chase a thousand. Two of us can put ten thousand to fight. And I found out the only one that went to fight was you. Let me hurry and get out of here. I have learned this year and almost two years during this pandemic that there are some people who I thought I could depend on that I found out I could not. You need to know that not everybody will be with you. And that you will always have persistent competitors. For the Bible says that the Philistines gathered together. The Philistines came when they were prepped for wealth, but they knew they were not prepped for war. Don't miss that. I'm going to holler. Steve put me. I'm going to holler. But, but I need you to know that the enemy understands where our heart is. So he knows when you only prep for wealth but you forsake prepping for war. So he says, since you only prep for wealth, I will let you get wealth. Because you love to go to the scripture that says it is he that giveth you power to get wealth. So I'm going to let you work and do all you can to get wealth because I know you ain't ready for war. And the reason I know you're not ready for war because there's a whole lot of us who are not willing to worship. And you will never be ready for war if you're not willing to worship. Let me help those who come to church and sit like a bump on the log and act like they're doing God a favor by showing up and that you are all this way and this is my seat and ain't nobody gonna sit here and I'm gonna get an attitude. Listen, until you remember that Worship is not about you. That worship is all about God. It doesn't matter what my title is. It doesn't matter what's in my bank account. It doesn't matter where I live. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And when you're willing to worship, you're ready for war and will. Steve, pray something so I can get out of here. Thank you. So the Bible says that the Philistines gathered themselves because they knew they were prepped for wealth, but they were not prepped for war. But there was somebody in the camp who they weren't ready for. There was somebody in the camp who they had not anticipated had a spirit of war and was ready for wealth. There was somebody in the camp who they did not anticipate would still be standing when everybody else had run. Somebody said yes. The enemy does not always anticipate when you approach the fight from a different angle and a different perspective. There was somebody in Israel's camp who says, I'm not leaving what God gave me because I believe it's still worth fighting for. Come on, y'all, and help me close, will you? Just use your elbow and push up somebody and tell them, I'm still standing because it's worth fighting for. That's why I refuse to give in. Uh, and I refuse to give up uh, because I realize that what I have is worth fighting for. Uh, somebody say yes. Uh, oh, the Bible says uh, that he took a stand. Uh, the Hebrew says yes, sir, uh, which means to sit in place. Uh, he stood in the midst of the plot uh, and he defended it. Uh, he did not fight from afar, but he stood in the midst of it and he defended it. He operated in faith and not in fear. And all I want to know tonight before I head back to Charlotte tomorrow 
Is it there anybody in Salisbury? If there's anybody in First Baptist who is willing to stand your ground, you want to just lift up one hand. If you will declare in Recharge 2020 that my recharge is not just about what I'm willing to praise him for, but my recharge is about what I'm willing to fight for. My recharge is not just what I'm willing to talk about, but my recharge is about what I'm willing to be about. I need some real people who ain't here just to signify and who ain't here just to be nosy to see who was going to show up. But I need some people tonight who will declare with me that I'm willing to stand if I have to stand the Lord has been too good to me for me to sit down in fear. The Lord has made too many ways for me for me to be scared. I got too much bacon on this. I got a family to protect. I got children to cover. I got a husband to cover. I got a wife to cover. And I cannot allow the enemy to and say stand the lesson that you gotta learn from this is that you can't always fight it from afar you can't always stand on the sideline but the bible says that Shammah stood in the midst of it some stuff you gotta do in the middle of it you gotta get in the middle of the mess you gotta get in the middle of the stuff some of us wanna shout from afar and feel like if we scream it'll go away but you gotta decide to stand in faith when others are operating in fear that's why I commend your pastor because while other churches are still closed and others are still afraid to gather in the house your pastor decided we're not going to operate in fear but we're going to operate in faith I'm not going to let any situation run me off of my land and run me out of my father's house for in my father's house
lot of space for us to spread out. Everybody's not going to come in. It's all right. I understand. Do you. But there's somebody that needs to come. And you just need to stretch out. You need to just stand. Come and I'm up. The altar is open. Because I came to make sure that there are some people here who are not scared of the Philistines. Who are not scared of whatever giants there are in your life. Who will not succumb to the threats that are being posed at us from every direction. I'm cautious and courageous. And I'm not going to be pumped because I've got power. I've got purpose. And I understand it's far greater than my past. I know that's right. Say that again. And God is saying, daughter, son, if you're willing to fight, over this little yeah. I'm about to bless you beyond anything you could ever imagine. There are some people who have been fooled, and you can stand anywhere. The shield is there, sister. One is there. You can get out because y'all tight where y'all are right now. I know that's right. Step on out. You can stand all around this building, all around this room. God, I'm standing the night because yes. I'm committing to this fight. Oh, yes, I'm standing because I'm willing to be a vessel that you will use for your glory, for your honor. This thing is bigger than me. If I let the devil come and take this field, it ain't just me who ain't gonna eat. Everybody gonna starve. And God, I'm standing tonight because I'm willing to be the one who will fight and ward off the enemy and let the devil know I'm not here by coincidence. I'm here on purpose. The devil thinks he's gonna snatch somebody's health. I'm going to go and I'm going to take your help. The devil is a liar. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his strength. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah. I am healed. You're not going to run me off with sickness. You're not going to run me off in the spirit of doubt. Oh, it ain't going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. So it ain't gonna happen. You're too late. Your season is past. Your season is over. You missed your moment. You missed your opportunity. The devil is still a liar. It ain't too late. It's not over until he says it. And I'm not leaving here until I get it. I got too much bacon on this field. I have ingested too much in this field. I have dug and I've planted and I've poured and I've cried and I've prayed and I'll let nothing run. I gotta stand so I can see the salvation of the Lord. I gotta stand in the spirit of Shammah. Was so amazing because Hebrew also translates Shama as God with me. Jehovah Shama. And it's Shama who stood when everybody else ran. Let me just say this. We're over time. I know we're over time. Long. You ain't got to tell me I preach long. I know I preach long. You ain't telling me nothing I don't know. Let me tell you what I know. I know 
that there are some people who think you are a fool for standing where you are. There's some people who think you done lost your mind. Just go to another field. Just go to another place. Just, just forget that. Just leave that. Listen, they live their life. Don't worry about them. Leave them there. Just forget that. I come tonight to tell you, hallelujah, that what God has for you, it is for you. And there is no good thing that he will withhold from those of us who walk uprightly. Everyone lift your hands toward heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, we've come to you tonight. We've sacrificed time. We're here over time, God. We're here long time, but we're in your time. And God, we've come to surrender and we've come for strength because it's been rough through here. We've met some challenges. We've met some hardships. Some other people dipped out on us. Other people left us. Other people fled. But you have given me strength to stand in the midst of adversity to stand in the midst of my hardships. You gave me strength to stand when everybody else is scared, everybody else is running, everybody else is fleeing, but something in me won't let me leave. And I pray now for a charge, for a surge of power, for a surge of faith. Increase my faith. Increase my standing power. Increase my staying power. Give me the ability to come against the adversary, to call things that are not as though they are. Give me the ability to operate in faith. Give me power. Give me a greater anointing. In the name of Jesus, I bind every demonic attack, every satanic attempt, oh, Shania, uh, everything that would try to disrupt me, to distract me, to discourage me. I Jesus, breathe a fresh wind and have your way. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this pastor who opened the doors because he heard from God. Now stir us up. Stir us in the spirit of the Lord. Everything in me. Stir it up. Make me ready for the next season. Make me ready for 2022. When I go in, I'm going in with power. I'm going in with joy. I'm going in with a breeze. Because I'm going to have more. Because I fought for less. And it is so. 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 Right to your mask. Open your mouth. Give him praise like it's already done. My healing is here. My deliverance is here. My help is here. My job is here. My resources are here. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody praise God like you know. It's already done.
trust that you will feel recharged, that you are recharged. You've been recharged, you've been blessed. Come on, let us give the preacher a hand of praise. Listen, those of you who are watching my virtual, go to Gimify, go to eat giving, and sow a seed into the life of this man of God. Go to eat giving, go to Gimify, sow a seed into the life of this man of God. Do not receive such a great word and walk away and not be a blessing as this man of God has poured his soul out to us reminding us that God will give us the victory thank you Jesus 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, who gives us the victory. Thank you, Jesus. It is God who gives us the victory. Thank you, Jesus. It is God who opens the door.
these pastors, preachers, come on, let's give them a hand. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. God bless you.